Hey everyone, this is Paul again with another SQL Skills demo video for you. Um, yesterday, just before I was presenting at PASS, my More DBA Mythbusters session, somebody came up to me at the back of the room and was asking about TempDB space tracking. They had a problem where their TempDB was kind of growing out of control. They were trying to figure out what was taking up space in TempDB. And I was explaining to them about the, the code that I have that I run on, on many systems to actually do that. So I thought what I'd do is a quick demo for you guys to show you some of this code and how you can use it. So what I've got is uh, a database that Kimberly and I use quite a lot for, for various demos called SalesDB. And you can get it from this link up here, past conferences. And what I've done is I've already done the restore so that I've got a nice clean database to play around with. And I'm going to kick off a, a nice gnarly query that's going to cause a memory spill out to TempDB. The way that queries execute is they get a certain amount of memory called a query execution memory grant. And that's what they're supposed to use to do everything to do with the, the query in terms of the query processors processing of, processing of the data that the storage engine has given it. If any operations don't fit inside that query execution memory grant, then they will likely spill out into TempDB. And this is what I'm going to force. So I'm going to kick off this, this gnarly query. Oops, it would help if I was in the right database, of course. And then in the other window, I've got some code that I'm going to run. Well, I'm going to go ahead and run it so I get some nice data back. And then I'll explain what it's doing. Okay. So what this query is doing is it is querying one of the DMVs that's specifically for TempDB. There's three of them, sys.dmdb, task, session, and file space usage. And what this one does, task space usage, is it gives the amount of space that's been allocated for either internal and user objects per thread that's running. So internal things are um, stuff that you don't specifically create, but are created for you as part of query processing. For instance, work tables, work files, stuff like that. And then user objects are obviously tables that you create or temp tables that you create. And this query is going to give everything back. But rather than just looking at task space usage, what's really interesting to do is to combine it like you have to do with most of the DMVs to get really useful information back. Combine it with DM exec requests and also pull in the SQL text and grab a plan handle so we can see what actually is going on. Now, when I'm running it on client systems, I'm actually, I put in a filter because I want to make sure that I'm not pulling in um, every single tiny thing that's using TempDB. I'm looking for big TempDB abusers. So the output of this query gives us back one row per thread that's executing. And you can see that I've got a nice big parallel operation going on here. All of these threads are from one session ID, that session ID that was running in the other window. And I've actually got 17 threads running. I've got eight logical CPUs on this laptop. So I've, I've got a nice produ producer consumer model going with 17 threads. And we can see that my query at the time that I run, ran that was using up a ton of space in TempDB. All right. So this is a really useful thing that you can take. You can take this, this query, take this code, run it in an agent job, maybe every 10 or 15 seconds, save the results out to a table in MSDB. And then every hour or so, send yourself an email saying, you know, here's all the stuff that's used a whole bunch of space in TempDB. Now, what I can also do is I can have a look and I can see the SQL text that's running. Very useful for doing after the, uh, after the fact analysis. And the other thing I can do is I get the query plan. So I've got a... Uh, this is a var binary 64. It's a query plan handle. So if I pick this up, copy it, and then take it down here, I can plug it into DM exec query plan. And I can go and get the graphical query plan of what was running. Now if I click on that, I get the graphical query plan. Now I don't like using SSMS for any kind of query plan analysis, even something as simple as this. What I like to do is use SQL Century's free plan explorer tool. And they've also got this really cool thing, which is an add-in for SSMS. So if I right-click anywhere in this plan and say View with SQL Century Plan Explorer, it's going to automatically save that query plan and bring it up in Plan Explorer. Isn't that neat? Now, this is a really, really simple plan, but even with a really simple plan, there's still some cool stuff that, that Plan Explorer does that SSMS doesn't. If we switch back to SSMS and we hover over something like the clustered index scan to see what's going on there, now look at the output list. 
it's really hard to parse that simply and try to figure out what the columns are because it prepends everything with database name, uh, schema name, and table name, but then it kind of mixes it all up and doesn't have one line for each one of the columns. The same kind of thing happens in the sort, right? Now, if I switch back over to Plan Explorer, if I look at the clustered index scan, it gives me the output list without all the junk in front of it. So I can see very simply there, database name, table name, index name, and then the output list in terms of columns. Even with the sort, if I look at the sort, okay, it still has the database name, schema name, table names, but it has it all one row, one line per column. Much, much easier to see. If you've never played with Plan Explorer, I totally recommend that you download it. You know, obviously I'm, I'm plugging it, but it's a completely and utterly free tool. You don't even need to register. Just go Google Plan Explorer and you'll find it and download it. It saves me tons and tons of time. Anyway, back to the, the question and point, which is what's going on and why are we spilling to disk? Well, if we look at the, the query plan, it's pretty obvious there that we are generating a ton of rows and we're doing a hash match and we're doing a sort. And these are gonna be spilling out to disk and that's what was taken up the space in tempdb. So even with a simple plan, it can be really, really easy to figure out what is going wrong with tempdb. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, you can take that code, um, go and grab it from the zip file that you can get with the, uh, the link from the um, newsletter, download it, play around with it, tweak it however you want, stick it in an agent job and you've got a, a kind of easy automated tempdb space tracking analysis system. Anyway, for those of you that were at PASS, I hope you really enjoyed PASS this year. It was a really cool conference. For those of you that weren't at PASS, I hope you get to go at some future date. And for everybody, thanks for watching and thanks for being a SQL Skills Insider. Till next time, bye-bye.